Welcome to District Dialogue. I'm Commissioner Mitchell. Now you're probably wondering why am I standing not only outside, but here at the Surgery Center at Wellstar. I've got more to talk to you about a deadly disease that's killing many of our men here in Douglas County. We've got statistics, we've got a, a urologist, we've got doctors, and I think you're gonna enjoy this particular segment of District Dialogues. So come on and join me. Welcome to District Dialogue. I'm Commissioner Henry Mitchell of District 1. And I guess most of you are wondering, okay, he's in a different setting. What is actually going on? And the reasoning we hear is we're at Wellstar. And I've got a special guest. He's a doctor. And he's going to share with us a lot about a unique thing that I've had a chance to witness. And that is prostate cancer. Now, I'll tell my story as we go along throughout this conversation about prostate cancer and, and what my involvement has been thus far. Uh, what I, what, how did I notice this? What procedures I went through? Uh, but I must say, I gotta give kudos to Wellstar for all the work they did with me and helping me get through this process. And this was a long journey, a very long journey. And my goal today is to actually make you the District Dialogue audience aware of this particular silent killer that I found out more about, and that is prostate cancer, and making you aware of how to get tested, what things to look for, and a, a plethora of stuff to kind of get you prepared for that situation that you may encounter. So with that being said, as I tell my story, I want to introduce a guest that I've got, and well, I'll let him do his introduction. Tell District Dialogue kind of who you are, I mean, your representation of this whole prostate cancer awareness moment. Sure, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for having me here on mm -hmm. your show. Mm -hmm. My name is Dr. Ashraf. I recently joined the medical group at Wellstar uh, in Douglasville, and uh, I completed my training at Grady Memorial with Morehouse School of Medicine. And I, I, I share with you, I'm a Grady baby, so just FYI, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's a good thing. Okay, yeah. well, go ahead. And uh, I'm very excited about my new position here, uh, taking care of, of uh, patients here in Douglasville. Got it. So uh, thank you, first of all, for coming on board and, and, and having a moment with our audience, our District Dialogue audience, and talk about prostate cancer. So, I mean, let's just kick it in high gear and sure. talk about, you know, a couple of big questions. I mean, my first question is, how do we alert the community on getting their prostate checked? And I mean... Well, Absolutely. Okay. It's a very important question. And I okay. think before we go into that, okay. uh, it's, uh, it's, it's important to mention the statistics. What are we looking okay. at? Okay. Okay. The numbers okay. are always good and they okay. put things in perspective of okay. how important these uh, issue is. Uh, for example, in 2018, there were about 165,000 new cases okay. of prostate cancer in the United States. Okay. And of those, there were about 30,000 people who died from prostate cancer. Wow. That's a huge number. Wow. And that shouldn't be the case with the, the screening test that we have. Uh, we were able to diagnose it earlier and that, that doesn't need to happen. And that was a case in point with me though. I had okay. an opportunity to kind of go through it and in my earlier years, uh, it was more of the blood test mm -hmm. that caught it versus okay. the anal testing and all the other good stuff. But okay. that's, a, that's a large number though. That is, that's a huge number. And uh -huh. you, you bring up a very valuable point. Okay. Um, well, if you look at the patients or individuals who are uh, uh, vulnerable or at risk for prostate cancer, okay. you have your adult males, okay. usually over 40, okay. and these individuals are pretty much set in their ways, and mm -hmm. having a digital rectal exam is not on top of their priority. I know, see, I was ready to run a marathon, okay. and, and when, when it all of a sudden came my way, mm -hmm. which it was probably already there, but when, I, when, when they made, me, uh, made it aware that you have prostate cancer, I, I didn't have any true symptoms. I wasn't hurting, I wasn't limping. Uh, they didn't have any urine, the blood in my urine or anything. Absolutely, so you're in like very a typical case of okay. early on okay. uh, prostate cancer uh, manifestation. So you, okay. would have, you would not have any symptoms. Not a one. Yeah, so, so you were lucky and fortunate enough to have a provider or go to a provider and have this done with the blood test mm -hmm. and 
which was further investigated with urology and, and yes, and yes, a biopsy and biopsy, everything yep. else, and, and, and realized that oh, okay, you, you, this exists. But give us some more statistics. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. uh, some of the other things that are uh, interesting about prostate cancer mm -hmm. is one out of every nine will be diagnosed males will be diagnosed with ca uh, prostate cancer in their lifetime, wow. Got which is which is a huge number. Uh -huh. Also, you will see about six cases in every ten. Uh, males will be diagnosed at the age of 65 or older. Got it. Okay. Uh, and as well as um, individuals from 57 to, uh, I'm sorry, uh, and the a average age of diagnosis is around 66. Okay. Th okay. That's the average age that uh, the cancer gets diagnosed. And, and, and what are some of the options that you have in the whole prostate, uh, I guess, from surgery to... I don't know, this may not, maybe, maybe a question for you or not though, but is it surgery, from surgery to, um, uh, uh, what is it, chemo? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there were several options uh, 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 that, that you can kind of go through to kind of hopefully to remove or, or, or take care of this situation that you may encounter. Oh, right. what, are, what are those, any of those processes that we can speak well, on? Well, yeah, so some of those things are, are really more involved. They're more of the urology specialty oh, questions. Oh, got you, got you. But, okay. but I think what we can t touch upon and, okay. and I think give more information to the audience is, for example, the statistics here in Georgia. Okay. So I have some numbers that I would like to just sure. mention and share, uh, share discuss with, with you. Uh -huh. So in the state of Georgia in 2018, we had a total of about 5,300 new cases of prostate cancer. Okay, okay. Uh, and we had about 870 deaths from prostate cancer, which wow. is a really high number. Yeah. If you look at our neighboring states in the south, mm -hmm. if you look, go to Florida, they had about 14,000 new cases mm -hmm. and about 2,200 deaths from prostate cancer, which is another huge number. Uh, just quickly going to North Carolina, they had about 5,500 wow. with about 9,900 uh, 9, uh, deaths from, from uh, prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, South Carolina had about 3,000 cases, new cases with 500 deaths. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tennessee and Louisiana, Tennessee was about 2,700 with 6,000 deaths. Wow. And Louisiana with uh, 2,600 and 400 deaths. Gotcha. Again, these are uh, big numbers which can definitely be controlled if we do uh, proper community outreach and screening. Right. And screening. And, and, and uh, most of this information, you, you're, you're pulling this from the American Cancer Society? That's it. That's okay. the 2018 American uh, Cancer Society web, website. Yep. Got it, got yep. it. Well, well, interesting. So, so with that, um, what, 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 what else do we need to share with the, with the general population and the general public about this, this bug, prostate cancer? I right. mean, I think one of the things that's very important is to make public awareness, okay. right? To have some sort of awareness campaign. Mm -hmm. Another thing is that we could definitely uh, look into free screening. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's going to be a huge part mm -hmm. of trying to get those new cases and 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 uh, making people aware that they have pro prostate cancers. Okay. And uh, other thing is testimonials, similar to you, what you're doing. This right. is a huge part of this. Individuals who have gone through this whole process, like mm -hmm. you, you can attest to yourself. Mm -hmm are very uh, key uh, points and key, key aspects of mm -hmm. this whole uh, community awareness and outreach programs. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, uh, people like you or individuals like you can really bring this uh, story to life. Right. You have right. a personal connection to it. Yes. And uh, we need more uh, individuals like you who can come forward. And mm -hmm. sometimes this is not the best thing. Remember, mm -hmm. society has stigmatized cancer and people do not kind of want others to know that they have cancers, and, and I want right, to applaud right. you to, to kind of do that, and that's, that's a great initiative that you're taking. As I didn't know, had no idea about it outside of my physician just helping me through this whole process to make me even aware that you might want to go get tested. What, what are the signs? What, what should you look for? Right, so How? like for example, for you, you, you had no symptoms None. of, of that, that kind of point to uh, having prostate cancer. But some of the major things we'll just touch upon would be, let's say for example, if you have any blood in the urine. Okay. That's, that's something that's concerning. Mm -hmm. Let's say you have blood in the semen. Okay. That's another uh, sign that is concerning. Uh, another thing is if you have a slow stream, your urine stream is mm -hmm. all of a sudden decreasing or you're retaining urine, those are all signs that point towards issues with your prostate. If you had uh, prostate problems before and now they're getting worse, are, are additional uh, risk factors or mm -hmm. assign, concerning signs. And, and there are several stages. I mean, I'm, I, I'll just say from one to, to four, four or five. Yeah. Or what, I, I, so so right. the, so the extreme is four or five, I mean, or? or yeah, so again, th those are, uh, I would have left that for the 
the urologist. The urology. I got it. I got it. Okay. That understood. Understood. I, I, okay. I, I, I'll stay away from that. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll leave that question for, for the next guy. So, but so um, we talked about you know some of the signs for what are the functionalities or anything that that we can we can talk from that perspective. Right. So so just to look at the prostate organ itself. Okay. Uh, to see where it's situated. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's it's a term that was uh, it's a Greek term that mm -hmm. means something that is placed in front. So it's actually in front of the bladder, mm -hmm. all right? And its function is to kind of provide this fluid for the passage of the semen. Right. Okay, right. And, and that's what its main purpose is to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happens in the case of prostate cancer is mm -hmm. that you have these cells that are, are dividing uh, normally, but they're out of control. Got it and then you have different zones mm -hmm. uh, where this can happen, and depending on where it is, you'll, the, the symptoms will be manifested differently. Got it, and, 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 and these cells just continuously kind of grow out and outgrow themselves, and, and, and I'm assuming that's the spread. The spread of, the, of cancer, yep. Got yep. it, yep. got it. Because I know, you know, just from my experience and what I'm dealing with thus far, um, didn't have any, any uh, slow urine, didn't have any, any true signs right. of, of, cause like I said, I was ready to run a marathon. Right, right. And only to find that you might want to go and get this checked. Okay. And they took the PSA and that was the blood, uh, blood test. Yep. The blood test. Mm -hmm. And came from that perspective and said, okay, oh, and they did a biopsy. Yep. Expressed the, explained the biopsy sure. process. Okay. Sure, right. So let's say for example, once you've seen your primary care physician or doctor, they okay. give you PSA, it was mm -hmm. elevated. Yes, but then there's that's the, the right word, elevated. Okay. Yeah, right. elevated, yeah, okay. it was uh -huh. higher than normal. Right. Then the next process would be to refer you to a urologist yes. who would have to go in and do a biopsy. Mm -hmm. So like you've experienced, the biopsy is done where multiple samples from the prostate are taken mm -hmm. and analyzed to see if there's any cancerous growth. Got it. And in your case, that was true. That, yes, yes. Yeah. And then after that's confirmed, then you go ahead and uh, different treatment options are right. provided to you. And depending upon what you and your urologist have discussed, right. you move forward and uh, undertake those treatments. And, and maybe a question for you or, or the urologist, what determines which of the options that you have? Well, Would it be the stage that you're in? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So again, this all has to do with the, the stage that the cancer is diagnosed. Okay. And uh, all things are looked at, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the, the stage of the cancer, the mm -hmm. spread will determine the mm -hmm. treatment options. Mm -hmm. and, and discussion between you and your uh, urologist uh, will determine the, the, the course that you guys take. Got it, because I end up doing the surgery. Okay. Uh, the robotic surgery. Okay. Okay, and did the surgery, uh, went well. So far, so good. I'll do an, uh, another testing in early January, February, okay. and oh, uh, ladder testing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and roughly about then determine kind of where we are and what that stage is. Sure. So I'm assuming in that particular process, they cut as far out, and, and I don't know what the, what's the right terminology, that mm -hmm. they cut far enough out to, to kind of capture whatever right. sure. the prop. Well, Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so, so what they will do is basically they would uh, map out the prostate with the core samples. Okay. And then they would do, the, and, and a doctor, the, the urologist will be able to better explain okay, to you. Okay. So they have like kind of mapped it out, mm -hmm. and then they will try to go as far where the margins are clean, where there is no growth, Got and remove it. all tissue within that uh, area. Area, uh -huh. So that you really want to get to that area that is growing abnormally, and Got just remove it. that out of the system. and then. Uh, monitor you in the coming months and years to, uh, your P uh, of your PSA levels. Right, right, because that's what's happening next in early January or right. so is to look at that particular uh, PSA level and see sure. exactly where we are and, and, and supposedly are, I'm assuming they're hoping that it's either negative one or zero or something of that sure. caliber yep. mm -hmm. based on what they actually did with the surgery. That's correct. Wow, okay, yeah. good stuff. Uh, any other statistics or anything else that uh, we, we need to kind of cover just from awareness, and I want to make sure that we, we make sure that our audience, you know, our sure. District Dialogue audience really understand the importance sure. of being tested. Absolutely. I mean, making sure that, you know, if you, you, you've got your, your husband, uh, you've got your uncles mm -hmm. and, and grandfathers, and make sure that they actually go out and get tested because this is important. Absolutely. This, so, 
Yeah, yeah. To, to just to, to kind of uh, increase that, uh, add to your point. Yes. Uh, I, I think it's very important to look at what re research has found. So there's a okay. number of studies that were done to uh -huh. look at what is the proper way of uh, out outreaching to the community and, wh right. and what the theme has has come uh, back and what they found is that if you have three things mm -hmm. that that uh, you address, you'll have a great uh, outreach program. Yeah. And one of the first things that they found was that you have to know your target audience. Mm -hmm. And in prostate cancer, uh, it is the African American population. Mm -hmm. Prostate cancer is more prevalent in this population than others. Mm -hmm. So you definitely want to address that issue that you have to know your audience. The second thing that they found was that the family members, mm -hmm. the, the girlfriends and the wives, played a huge part in getting these individuals to getting the screening. Got you. All right? Mm -hmm. And then the final thing that ties everything together is having a provider, a mm -hmm. healthcare provider mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you trust, mm -hmm. that you can sit down and uh, discuss this and have a game plan in place mm -hmm. where you guys do the PSA, whatever you're comfortable with, or the mm -hmm. digital rectal exam, mm -hmm. and then be prepared for the outcome, mm -hmm. and then take it from there. And I think bringing these three things together will enable us to have a very successful outreach program. Got it. And, and that's something I, I think as uh, I get back in office and do what I do is to make this um, a journey yes. of, of, of minds to assure that those that need to know, know. Uh, right. Because I feel like if I, can, if I can reach out and capture at least one somebody who takes the test, yeah. who actually get out and, and do the right thing, as I would call, and hopefully, hopefully help one somebody will be a, a massive of numbers will will multiply and help the community by being aware of this particular, uh, as I've known it as the silent killer of, of men. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So. I think this is a great initiative. This is a great endeavor. Uh -huh. But always remember that with any uh, uh, challenge that you're facing, mm -hmm. uh, it's never a sprint to the final result. We're right. not going to sprint and you're get right. everybody you're right. screened. Mm -hmm. It's more of a marathon. We're going to just pace ourselves. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we just have to remember that uh, we are human beings. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the target audience for uh, prostate cancer mm -hmm. uh, are those individuals who really are set in their ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, the goal here is going to be uh, to identify these people. Mm -hmm. They're, they're going to be your uh, policemen, they're going to be your firefighters, mm -hmm. they're going to be your uh, athletes. Yes. But at the end of the day, it's about getting screened. And we got to get the word out, yes. get the community involved, and uh, definitely we have the treatment. Got it. We have, uh, you know, mm -hmm. medicine has advanced that the treatment is there. People who get diagnosed, treated early, live long, healthy lives. Yes. of which you're going to be a, a prime example of. You got it. I, I know you, you spoke of earlier about the, the macho-ness of, of the males yes. and how we feel and, and, and don't want to do the anal. Uh, digital <laughs> rectal test. Yeah. That, that, that becomes a really a, a tough move to make, but if nothing more, with technology and with the, using the, the PSA or the yeah. bloodstream, that yes. you can kind of take that test. Is that something that you should do when you go to your physician and say, hey, uh, I would like to get um, a Test prostate it. test, sure. but do you have to make that request of a PSA or is it automatic that, that they'll get that message of what that is? That is a very important question yeah. and I think this is something that needs to be discussed. Okay. Uh, the way research has um, come about with prostate cancer, different organizations have provided different information okay. and therefore there's conflicting uh, kind of research that shows the benefits and uh, the, the risks of getting the PSA. Okay. So that's why healthcare providers have kind of taken a step back. Okay. Uh, what, the, what needs to be done here is it's individually based. Mm -hmm. uh, you, if, you're con if you're concerned enough mm -hmm. and you fall within that category of uh, above fi uh, 40 years old mm -hmm. and you're African American or mm -hmm. you have fam close family members with prostate cancers, mm -hmm. you're at higher risk. Got it. So if it's those individuals, I'll highly recommend them going to their healthcare mm -hmm. providers, mm -hmm. uh, discussing with them their concerns mm -hmm. and uh, asking for the PSA, mm -hmm. and then um, taking it from there. And mm -hmm. those individuals who don't belong to this category, uh, uh, it's, it's individually based. You know, it's up to them how concerned they are about prostate cancer. So, so on a closing note, so, so what, it, are there any things that Wellstar, and I know you're newly on board with yes, Wellstar, yes. are there any plans for Wellstar to, to help orchestrate 
uh, this awareness program when it comes to men and prostate cancer? Are there any plans uh, that, that you guys may have that's in the future? I think, I think it's, it's, a, it's a great initiative. I mm -hmm. think um, I have a firm belief mm -hmm. that if you have a healthier community, you have a happier community. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it, I'll definitely try to pursue, pursue or, or make, this, uh, make, it a, uh, make it awareness. Mm -hmm. Uh, project and mm -hmm. a topic for mm -hmm. our, our leadership here. Yes, and uh, I'm looking forward to maybe in the future, uh, you know, working together and, and making getting the word out that, you know, getting a PSA is very easy. Yes. You know, if yes. you're interested in getting a digital rectal exam, that's fine. But we we have a blood test <laughs> that can give us uh, a clue into clue. what's yes. going on. Right. And you can get it every year and we just get a surveillance and right. catch prostate cancer early because the treatments are there. Right. And once you're treated. Be able to live a long, healthy life. Like well, that's what I, I, I'm expecting. So, I mean, they got me now for another four years, but I know I got another 104 years that, yes, that's absolutely. forthcoming. So, absolutely. but listen, let me say thank you again. Sure. And I appreciate you sharing uh, with the District Dialogue audience. Uh, are there any closing remarks that you would like to share with our audience? No, actually, I'm very uh, honored and privileged that I got the opportunity to come uh, on your show and discuss uh -huh. this. This is, a, this is a very important uh, topic. Yes. And it's very easy to kind of get tested and, and get the public aware aware of the, the situation. Yeah. Well, as you know, it's personal to me, yes. and, and that's why I chose this particular topic. So again, thank you, and I appreciate you uh, being a part of District Dialogue. You're welcome. With that being said, I've got another guest that's gonna come on, another urologist, as we spoke about earlier, that's gonna share with you some of uh, the, um, the, the procedures and that you'll go through from uh, the biopsies to uh, you name it, even the surgery. And matter of fact, he'll be, he's the one who actually did my surgery. So stick around, there's more to come right here on District Dialogue. Welcome back to District Dialogue again. I'm Commissioner Henry Mitchell, District One. And as I stated earlier, um, we're here at Wellstar and we're talking prostate <clears throat> cancer. Yes, uh, it was an interesting journey for myself, and I have the opportunity uh, to introduce to you, District Dialogue listen, uh, viewers, uh, the gentleman who actually did the surgery for me and got me now to living a long, healthy life. So I'll let you introduce yourself as my special guest here on District Dialogue. My name is uh, Gaspar Msangi. I'm a urologist here at uh, Wellstar Douglas Hospital. Um, I do general urology. I do a lot of robotic surgeries, like mm -hmm. the one I did for you. Mm -hmm. But I don't just do prostates. I also do kidneys, oh, okay. a bladder surgery, and other techniques as well, open procedures, uh, endoscopies for kidney stones wow. or bladder stones. BPH is very prevalent mm -hmm. in our community, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I help with that as well. Well, let me first say thank you. And I know my family would say thank you for what you've done from, for us. That so was again. a privilege for me to be of service. Okay, you yes. got it. Well, let's, let's dive right in, because I know you, as you can see, he's ready to go. <laughs> but um, how do you know? How, how do you really know that this is a time that you definitely have prostate? So what are the signs? What do you, how do you get to that point of knowing that you've got prostate cancer? Unfortunately, for most people, prostate cancer has no signs or symptoms. Mm -hmm. It is something that you have to be screened for, and uh, we find it through testing. Um, it's, I'm sure you had a conversation with the previous doctor about the timing of uh, screening and things like that. Yes. But, um, when you, if we find uh, an elevated PSA mm -hmm. uh, through a blood test, mm -hmm. then we proceed with doing a biopsy. Mm -hmm. And this is a procedure that can be done either in the office um, or it can be done in a surgery center under anesthesia. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you went through it. Yes, and, uh, <laughs> yes I did. For most people it's a, it's a benign procedure mm -hmm. um, and uh, people tolerate it very well. Uh, we take tissue samples from your prostate, mm -hmm. we send, it to, send them to a pathologist, they evaluate the tissue and they give us a diagnosis. Wow. That's really the way to know that mm -hmm. you have prostate cancer. Got it. Now, <clears throat> if the prostate cancer is advanced, it is possible for you to have symptoms, and the symptoms can be, um, now before I say the symptoms, I don't want to scare people because the symptoms are non-specific. You okay. may have the symptoms, 
because you have something else and it may not be cancer at all, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, symptoms like difficulty urinating, okay. blood in the urine, urgency, frequency of urination, mm -hmm. those things are possible mm -hmm. with prostate cancer. Um, or if it's advanced and you have metastasis to the bones, you could have pain, pain mm -hmm. in your hips, pain in your back mm -hmm. because of the metastasis. But yeah. The majority of people do not show any symptoms when they are diagnosed well, with prostate cancer. Is I'm that, one of those, right, case? exactly, because yeah, exactly. when we had this conversation, I didn't have any of those kind of yeah. signs other than you saying, uh, let me explain this to you, right. and yes, you have prostate cancer. So that was a, because I was ready to run a marathon. I was, I was like, you know, like this, this can't be true, or this is not, are you, are you sure? Right. And I'm asking you that. <laughs> Right. So, I mean, so that's why it's very important for people to get screened for prostate cancer, because okay. if you wait for symptoms, um, for the most part, if, you, if you're showing symptoms, the cancer is advanced. Got most it. people are found to have cancer, at least in America. So, so, um, so let's talk about the advance. There's, there's, I'm going to say zero, and then what, four or five, and so... Right. So okay. most people are found w when the cancer is still confined to the prostate. Okay. You know, you, you, during your physical, um, you get screened for prostate cancer with a mm -hmm. PSA. Mm -hmm. If the PSA is elevated, you mm -hmm. get a biopsy. Most of the times we find, if we find cancer, it's confined to the prostate. Mm -hmm. Meaning, if you had local treatment, mm -hmm. then you could be cured of the cancer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, some people may have locally advanced um, um, cancer of the prostate, whereby the cancer has gone s just right outside the prostate or involving the organs immediately surrounding the prostate. Okay, mm -hmm. there's still possibility of... That's an advanced stage of... Yeah, it okay, is a little okay. bit advanced. Okay, okay. Uh, it's not confined to the, to the prostate, prostate anymore, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's not disseminated mm -hmm. into other organs mm -hmm. uh, far away from the prostate. Got so it. with that, it is also still possible to treat and cure the disease. Um, yeah. Got it, got it. It could spread to right. other organs, uh, which are not immediately surrounding the prostate, like right. your bones. Usually, right. yeah, it could even go to the brain and other organs as well. So, uh, so, so the testing is important. It is very um, important, yes. And, and the, I know going through it, through my process and with my physician doing the anal, and that may not be the proper word for this testing, we call it a digital rectal. A exam. digital rectal, okay, all right. So with that, <laughs> yes. most men run away from that, but even then, she nor yourself could find anything from that because it was such an early stage. Correct. Because uh, there was no lumps and bumps and there was Correct. no roughness, and I mean, Correct. share that. So yes, when we do a digital rectal exam, what okay. we're looking for is, first of all, the size of the prostate. We sweep our finger to make sure that the surface of the prostate feels smooth. Okay. It's not lumpy bumpy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not irregular, one side being larger than the other. Mm -hmm. It's not too firm. Mm -hmm. You know, things that will cue us to know that there's an ab abnormality going on. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. like you said, you know, for a lot of people, a digital rectal exam is normal. Mm -hmm. It's negative, mm -hmm. but they may still have cancer. Correct. So it's the rectal exam combined with a PSA okay. that uh, that we use to screen for prostate cancer. So there are some 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 exams, as you stated, or the rectal exam that kind of you can catch it at that point. But if you probably seeing at that point, you could be further down the road. Uh, it's possible. Yes. Okay. Um, you can still you can have an abnormal exam and okay. the cancer still be confined within the prostate. Got it. Yes. Got it. Got it. But okay. most prostate cancer that we pick up these days is through a PSA. Got more it. than a. A rectal exam. So, and that's why we're encouraging folks to kind of do the PSA. Yes. And is that something that you request at your physician? You say you ask for a PSA, or is it automatic when you get a blood test at your physician? Is they test that? I, no, I'm not I'm sure. Ideally, it should not be automatic. Ideally, okay. you should have a conversation with what? your physician okay. before you do the testing. And the reason is, there are sometimes unnecessary testing that happens and okay. unnecessary consequences that happen after the 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 finding of an elevated PSA. Okay. 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 Uh, there's many people who um, may have a slightly elevated PSA, and then they go through the anxiety of fearing that they may have cancer. Got they may yeah. have to go through um, biopsies of the prostate, uh -huh. and then have a negative uh, biopsy so, in the end. Okay. But they've gone through a procedure that may not have been necessary. Got so it. before you have the test, I think you should have a conversation with your physician, saying Got that we recommend doing this, but these are the potential things that could come out of, out of this test. Got it. So you have your eyes wide open, mm -hmm. you're informed Understood. before you make Understood. the decision. Understood. Makes yes. sense. Makes sense. <coughs> Let's talk about the surgery. Okay. Okay. So, so share with, 
uh, district dialogue audience about the surgery itself. I know now that they got the robotics, yes. I mean, not saying they don't do the other ways of just cutting and digging, but talk about the surgery side of it though. Yeah, so the majority of uh, surgery done in America for prostate cancer is robotic. Oh, okay. Prostatectomy. Because we've advanced that much, I guess. Correct. Okay. Um, traditionally, uh, we used to do them open. Okay. And um, the whole process is taken out. There was a little bit longer hospital stay, mm -hmm. and uh, but now with advancement in technology, we mm -hmm. can we can do very small incisions, like you know, mm -hmm. um, um, and you spend a night in the hospital mm -hmm. and uh, go home the next day with a catheter. You come back a few days later, um, maybe a week mm -hmm. or two weeks to have the catheter removed. Mm -hmm. um, I do not know how what your experience was like. Uh, Lord, don't, let's not people, talk about the catheter. <laughs> Jesus, but For go ahead. For most people, that's, that's <laughs> the most uncomfortable thing is oh, a catheter. Oh, yes. But uh, it's not really, pain is not that big of a of an issue for right. a lot of people. Right. Everybody's different. Right. Uh, uh, but, but don't talk uh, about the catheter. The we'll, catheter. We'll talk about everything else and, with the catheter. And, uh, Be and because even with the catheter, and I don't mean to cut you off there, but even with the catheter with me, yes. it somehow, my urine um, um, somehow got into the, uh, blood got into the urine and yes. it clogged it up. Yes. Well, guess what? I had to come back and have the catheter removed. removed and replaced. Yeah, that's rare. That's, oh. uh, <laughs> well, okay, thanks. <laughs> I appreciate but, it. Yes, uh, things like that do happen. Yeah. But uh, the surgery, um, you know, robotic surgery has uh, made things a lot better for patients. Okay. Um, it's made a lot of things better for surgeons as well. Okay. Um, it's easier for us to see uh, okay. With, okay. Uh, with robotics. Um, you get a 3D view of the anatomy. Okay. Um, it's very clear. You know exactly where you're cutting. You know what you're pulling. You know what you're holding. Traditionally, there was a lot of feeling because deep in the pelvis, mm -hmm. you can't really see. Okay. So there's a lot of feel. Mm -hmm. You know, you do by feel. Mm -hmm. But now I can actually see, see it. Okay. Yeah. okay. So it's easier to tease out and preserve nerves, which mm -hmm. will help with continence and uh, okay. and. Uh, um, erectile function after so, surgery. So, as I'll call it my tailbone, you may call it something totally different because I'm not, I don't have the medical terminology. So that's why when I'm sitting a lot at that time, if I, I couldn't sit a lot, which I'm still having difficulties with sitting, so I've got to get this cushion and everything else to sit down and yes. because of where the, where the prostate was removed. Correct. Uh, the prostate is deep in your pelvis and okay. sometimes, you know, people who have not had surgery, if you have prostatitis, you mm -hmm. have a discomfort between your legs mm -hmm. um, and if you have surgery in the prostate, yes, you may have some discomfort with sitting, but usually that lessons and over time. Yes, it does. Yeah. I, I, I'm Eventually. getting better at it, but, uh, you know, but as this, this long journey has been one of those, you know, if I stand and sit, well, there's some time I couldn't stand because I feel like I'm, something is pulling down on me or yeah. I'm sitting too long and it starts to, to, to irritate me, kind of a combination of them both. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, different people have different symptoms after surgery mm -hmm. and um, this usually get better with time. Yes, yes, yes. It's gotten a whole lot better. Oh, good. A whole lot better, so. <laughs> it's, we're still early out of from your surgery. I know, you know I know, I know. Take the big picture. Picture. So you're doing well, I think. Um, I, 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 I would say yes to that, that right. I'm doing well. Uh, so the robotic now is the, is the kind of the technology side of, of how things are and kind of give you recovery time faster. So Wellstar is offering this type of a surgery for those who have it yes. or need it. Or yes. need, but what about for those who decide to take the, um, the chemo side of it or the radiation side of it? I mean, so robotic surgery, uh, I mean, radical prostatectomy is not the only treatment option for Correct. prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, you could have radiation therapy mm -hmm. uh, to cure the disease. Um, that's done by radiation oncologists. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you go in, um, you have different sessions right. uh, whereby they irradiate the prostate. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's an everyday session for about 30 days. Yeah, um, sounds about right. Because <laughs> yeah. it, so, it was brought to my attention about that, but go ahead. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> some people choose to have that because they don't want to have surgery. Um, uh, it may have less an effect on uh, incontinence and, uh, and erectile dysfunction afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got its own side effects as well. Mm -hmm. Usually with radiation therapy, um, the negative effects may linger and become more evident as time goes out. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, especially for us urologists, we see uh, people who've had radiation therapy come back with irritative urinary symptoms, Got you. urgency, frequency of urination, mm -hmm. sometimes blood in the urine. Mm -hmm. And the blood in the urine can be very significant, mm -hmm. you know, needing procedures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, overall, uh, people do very well with uh, radiation therapy. Got it. So it is an option for mm -hmm. cure. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have uh, prostate cancer that is still uh, uh, 
contain confined to the, okay. to the prostate. Or even if it's a little bit locally advanced, mm -hmm. you can still have radiation therapy. Got and it. it may be of benefit. Got it. Yeah. Okay, and, and I know we're going to wrap this up, though, but w w which, which option do you choose or is based on you and kind of your vision as to what? Yeah, I mean. so this, um, I usually have a conversation with my patients mm -hmm. and I also recommend for them to see a radiation oncologist in the appropriate setting. You did. There's some <laughs> Check. <laughs> that's right. There's some patients um, who, actually for most patients with locally advanced cancer, yeah. I will have them see a radiation oncologist so they can get education on both yes. treatment modalities. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some people that radiation therapy may not be appropriate, mm -hmm. you know, if they have advanced prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. um, then I send them to a medical oncology mm -hmm. uh, oncologist and uh, they'll discuss the um, options then. But uh, um, it's, a, it's a shared decision making whereby I will advise my patients and I will tell them, I'll talk to them about surgery. Mm -hmm. Some people already come in with the, with the decision that I never want to, to have surgery in my life and I'm not going to have it. Got it. And I respect that. So I send them to a radiation oncologist. Okay. So people okay. are open okay. to both options and my job is to But the better part of this educate. is to, to test and, and, and catch things like this early. Exactly. So you have the options. Exactly. Especially because prostate cancer, you may have prostate cancer and not have any symptoms. Oh, I didn't have one. Yeah. Yeah. So. Because I was trying to get you to come and go to do the marathon with me until you said, <laughs> sit down, let me explain yeah. this to you. Let's yeah. Hold wow. on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> but you're right. So, uh, the better part is to definitely get the testing done. Yes. Uh, definitely, I would highly recommend that yes. uh, to, to assure and, and, and consult with your physician. Yes. And kind of have that kind of dialogue. Yes. And now, catching it early, hopefully, that's what the this result in, and that way you can kind of have the options of all of this that you can Correct. possibly do, and it's your, your choice. Because I know you said, said, you said to me, well, Commissioner Mitchell, if you want, you can just kind of wait. It. Exactly. Sit Not all prostate cancer has to be treated. You're exactly right. Yeah, okay. So that has to be a conversation with your physician because yeah. depending on the pathology mm -hmm. and your age mm -hmm. and your medical mm -hmm. condition, mm -hmm. what other medical problems you have right. and what your lifestyle is like and what right. your philosophy about your life is, right. you know, there's some prostate cancers we can just watch. Right. Because the truth is, Although we do diagnose a lot of prostate cancer, mm -hmm. the majority of people who are diagnosed with prostate cancer will not die from it. Got it. Will die of something else. Got it. Okay. So Get hit that's by a bus very or important. For <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. But yes, <laughs> you know. So it's very important for people to know that that right. not all prostate cancer mm -hmm. has to be treated. So people should not be afraid uh -huh. of screening and being found out because you know information is power. Right. Then you can decide what you want to do. But you need to know. You need to know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you can kind of get educated on exactly. what you may or may not want to do that. Right, because your prostate cancer may be that that needs to be treated. There's Got some it. prostate cancers I will not, uh -huh. I will strongly suggest that you should get treated. You know, some it. we can say, you know, we can watch and see uh -huh. what happens, but there's some, you know. And, and also age has a, pays a, a, a factor in, in this as well, though. Yes. So. so waiting to see in some time, and I'm not encouraging either way, you wait to see and let's say hypothetically you're 75, 80. Yeah. If, a, if an 80 year old man is okay. diagnosed with prostate cancer and it's Gleason states, it's confined to the prostate, mm -hmm. I'll probably consider telling him, you know, you probably should see what happens. Got it. Okay. And there's, uh, there's uh, different ways of doing that. You know, there's, uh, there's uh, active surveillance whereby mm -hmm. we are at, we're waiting, mm -hmm. but we are doing something yes. in the meantime. Mm -hmm. We're getting PSAs, we're doing exams, mm -hmm. you know, we're repeating biopsies, yes. or we're just watch for waiting. We're just waiting to see if symptoms develop. Got and it. if symptoms develop, then we treat. Got but it. otherwise, if there's no symptoms, you're not suffering, you can live with prostate cancer. Got it. Yes. And, and, and it depends upon how aggressive this... Exactly right. Whatever. The cancer is. Yeah, the cancer yes. is. Yes. Okay. Wow. Yeah, because even in those, you know, in an 80, 80 year old who mm -hmm. has prostate cancer, mm -hmm. there's some that should be treated if it's mm -hmm. very aggressive. We we can suggest treating. You share it with me, like um, from the mere fact of should you do surgery or chemo or whatever, or in the reverse, Radiation, yeah. it's okay. So help me un help our audience understand doing it in the reverse. It doesn't work best. Oh, I'm not saying it doesn't work best, but so, oh, it's I not recommended. Yes. Yeah, you know. So if you've had radiation therapy, okay. can you have surgery afterwards? You can, mm -hmm. but once a tissue has been irradiated, mm -hmm. it's not um, healthy anymore. Got it's it. not as easy to work with surgically. Got There's it. a higher risk for complications Got compared it. to 
fresh tissue that has not had radiation therapy. So that's why the surgery would be recommended before type of radiation Typically, versus yes. the, in the reverse. But uh, but you can you can have either way. Got it. Yes. And so there's surgery, there's radiation therapy, mm -hmm. but there's also hormonal mm -hmm. therapy, which mm -hmm. is a treatment option. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, cryotherapy, mm -hmm. and uh, you know there's proton therapy. Mm -hmm. There's many different options for Understood. prostate cancer. Understood. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. I really, truly appreciate it's this. It's been a pleasure. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to share with our District Dialogue audience about what you do, how you do, and being a great part of Wellstar? And thank you for being a part of Wellstar. But I mean, just anything you'd like to share, because this is going to be a mission of mine now, as you probably know, that I'll, I'll take this journey and we're going to go a long way with it yeah. and making people aware, especially men, about this particular disease. It's important for people to have regular medical checkups. Okay. There's a lot of people that I meet that are, feel healthy mm -hmm. and they don't go to a doctor because they feel healthy. Mm -hmm. Yes, you should maintain that health. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people who take better care of their cars. They go have their oil changed every three months or mm -hmm. however long, but mm -hmm. they never go every year to have them checked. Right. You know, they right. should. Right. And uh, you can find that you need to check your blood pressure and maintain it mm -hmm. and, you know, have a PSA checked if you're between the ages of 55 and 69. Mm -hmm. um, talk to your doctor about all these things because it could change your life. Yes. For the better. Yes. Yes. Well, thank so. you. Thank you for that closing word. We really appreciate it. And for those of you uh, that are watching, thank you for being a part of my journey and the journey of understanding more about prostate cancer. Thank you again. Enjoy your day. And thank you for tuning into District Dialogue. I'm Commissioner Mitchell. Thank you.